everyone. Happy pre-St. Patrick's Day to you all. We are almost there for our national holiday and it just means a day off for us here. Hi Hannah, nice to see you. Um, yeah, we're looking forward to a day off here in Ireland because it's Patrick's Day. Now, I know Patrick's Day to everyone around the world means all sorts of different things. Um, the big thing for us here growing up is Patrick's Day parades and a day off. Um, hey, good morning from Western New York. Um, hi everyone, nice to see you all there. You're all ready for our Patrick's Day celebrations. I'm wearing all of the Irish wool in celebration. Admittedly, I should really be wearing my green, but I've decided to go with the blue Ardera because I, um, yeah, I like this color. It's one of my favorite colors. Um, you, some of you may have spotted that we put up yesterday a new vlog over on YouTube. And the reason is, um, and the reason that we put up the vlog is I realized that several people who have joined in the last couple of years may not be aware of some of the earlier works that I've done and things like that. So several years ago, many years ago now, back in 2011, one of the first things I did was I wrote a book called Contemporary Irish Knits and I used the blog to talk about it and the reason behind it and why it's still relevant today. And I will come back to it, but there was a few questions popping in there that I'll answer. Um, Jean, what is my sweater? This one is Ardera, which is from my older book here, Contemporary Irish Knits, which you're gonna see is backwards there. So it's a book where it was a tour of the mills around Ireland and in particular, um, it is actually looking at each of the mills and the yarns they produce and patterns to go with each one of them. It's contemporary Irish knits because it's taking the contemporary part of what I like about knitwear design, seamless, shaped, things that are fit for your body. And then it's also combining with the more traditional and taking some of the stitch patterns that would often be associated with Ireland and just are just really interesting to knit with and using the Irish yarn, but in a way that it's wearable and it's something you want to wear. Now you were also asking the final clue for Campo Nights that came out last Thursday. Um, I kind of started talking about it a small bit, the Campo Nights clue, the very edge of it was similar to the second clue, but this time with the dragon wings, we've got a garter stitch background and there are two different edging options, either a crochet loop bind off or an I-cord bind off. But the clue should be out with you already. So if you missed it, jump in and take a look. Next week, we will have the big reveal of the shawl and the final pattern will come out as well. But if you're part of the knit along, you should already have the final clue. Um, just looking at some of the messages coming in here. I don't think there's any more questions, but if you do, oh, we do have one here. Uh, you have the book and you like it. You wonder if I could show the green cardigan a bit close up. The yoke is unusual. Oh, I totally can. The one behind here, I assume is what you're talking about. This is actually one of my favorites from the whole book. This is Killy Beggs and this is knit in Aaron Tweed, which is a, I'm gonna bring this down a small bit here so you can see it better. Um, it's Aaron Tweed which is a singles yarn, um, but it's an Aran weight done by Donegal Yarn. Uh, it's done from the bottom up and it uses a really, really simple honeycomb pattern. So this one, honeycomb pattern, it's just two by two out, two by two in, that's all you're doing. And the garment, the waist of it here, you can see there's much wider cables and that creates a tighter pull because cables pull in the work. So if you have bigger cables, it's gonna pull it in more. So there is in fact no decreases at the waist and all of the shaping is just due to the cables. Um, then the top of it here, it is, I use it in my classes when I'm talking about cables to show how you can hide all sorts of things behind cables. Cause you know, when you've got a cable cross, you can have anything happen at the back of the cable cross and you don't know, you can change it from a knit to a pearl, you can add a decrease, you can add an increase, and it's completely hidden. Um, so it makes it, it's very deceptive, um, but it means that you can actually do lots of things that look seamless. So you've got one comes up like this, then you've got two individual ones up the side here, 
but you've got decreases in between. So then these two form together. And then when you get up to the top, there's just a tiny little cable here and a final decrease. But it looks like it all kind of blends in together. But in fact, it's just all decreases working its weight up here. Um, and it was one of those designs, because I was a newer designer as I worked through it, I had a vision of what I wanted it to look like. But it wasn't until I sat down and started initially, it was solid cables all the way down here. But what ended up happening is it was too dense. There was too many cables. But if I didn't have one continuing up here, you lost the cohesion. It didn't look visually. Your eye didn't think that the honeycomb was continuing all the way up. So it took, I think I had a hat version of it, first of all, which is also in the book. And it took, I think, about three or four versions to work through before we got the right balance between just enough cables and not so over the top that it was dense. Um, you're asking, what am I wearing? This is Ardera, which is also from the Contemporary Irish Knits book. And it does make me realize I need to pull out some of my older patterns on a regular basis because just because I know what they are doesn't mean that if you haven't been following me for 12 years, perhaps you were not knitting then, you're never going to have seen some of my original patterns. So this is Ardera, which is also from the Contemporary Irish Knits book. And I'll turn around and so it's got cables running up through the middle and it's got this panel of three here and here and the same on the back and it's a longer I wonder if you can see here it's kind of a tunic length and then there's decreases down the sides as well where it's got some shaping coming in and out and it's got a belt as well so I've seen a few versions of this where people have either picked up stitches and continued down for full sleeves or even done and increase the stitches going out here. So I have seen a few long sleeve versions of this as well. Hey Liz, I have got some, before I forget, we've got, Liz, I've got, I've got our little friend to share back there as well. Um, but I just want to make sure, um, what yarn did I use for this? This one is Aran Tweed. So if you want, it's a, it's a singles Aran weight yarn from Donegal Yarn. Our Studio Donegal Soft Donegal is going to be a good match for it as well. And it's going to be nice and soft because it's a merino as well. So it's, I think that the Soft Donegal would be what I'd be using for this. Same weight yarn um, and it's going to give you, but this one, the Aran Tweed, because it's singles, it's not quite as durable. But the Studio, um, the Soft Donegal, it's got two plies and twisted. So it would have just a little bit more durability. Nope, this one is bottom up as is this one. In fact, I was actually talking, not, this one could be bottom up or top down, would work well both ways. But I find that when you're doing a heavy all over cable garment, particularly if there's any yoke shaping, bottom up actually works better for the cables because you can establish all the cables, get used to how it works before you start doing any, in this case, the short rows and a few additions and things like that. So frequently when I'm doing um, cables, I will do them bottom up for that reason is it's easier to write and it's easier to knit as you're going through. As a general rule, top down's my preference, but with cables, I would veer towards bottom up very frequently for that reason, really. Got to share somebody over here. We have this guy has been hanging out in the studio with us all week. This is Mr. Pat here, and it, it and, and this fellow is been hang on, I think Liz is still there. Liz uh, knit this for us, and she was in here a few weeks ago. And I want to show you, there's actually a brooch. Jean, who was in at the same time, gave us a brooch that we put on here. And this one was made by um, art, an NCAD, which is the National Art College in Dublin. And she had made these little sheep brooches, and they're in fact by natural dyed Galway fleece, which seemed quite fitting considering we're in the middle of the Galway sheep project at the moment. Um, Elsa Louise, Portulaca. Oh, I might, uh, uh, Laura, if you are listening, you might grab Portulaca downstairs and I can kind of talk about that in a minute with people. Uh, can you get sweater help with the patterns in the book? You totally can, of course. Um, best way is either up on Ravelry or probably even better still if you post it into the Knit Hub forums because I will always see them um, very quickly. Elsa Louise, he's adorable, isn't, isn't he just adorable? Uh, he is one of the mess, best made uh, stuffed toys I've ever come across in my life. I'm just, I'm kind of, 
I'm in awe of Liz and her knitting skills because I'll be honest, I'm not sure I could actually knit this. I've got, <laughs> I've got Laura is sneaky in behind. Look, look, we've got Laura in here. It's, it's a special Patrick's Day, Laura. <laughs> you are all honored. Laura does not make appearances very often. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's extra special to get Laura in. So what we brought up that we had a, I think it was at Elsa Louise you, you were asking about is Portilaca. This is Portilaca and this one is knit from the bottom up and it's seamless again. I might actually put it on this over here so you can see it more easily. I'm going to double layer my cardigans here. Portilaca is in soft Donegal. Um, same yarn, say uh, the yarn I was talking to you about with this that I think would work very well. It's lovely and soft. It's a 100% merino and doesn't look too flattering heavy one over the other, but you get the idea. So this one is, let's pull this up, that's better. This was originally done for a craftsy course and it's a standalone pattern. And it's done in the round from the bottom up with some waist shaping. You can see here, there's side shaping there where all of the cables kind of come in and go out. And then you've got, decreases up along here where it eats into the cable and this is a really good example of why I like to do my cables from the bottom up. So if you see how heavily cabled it is and you've got all of that established and the only decreases you've got are in the side but it's not changing the cables but when you get up here all of those cables get eaten into but you know exactly where they're supposed to be so it makes a lot of sense and it's very easy to knit so it's much much easier whereas if you started this from the top you'll have one chart where you'll have this much another size might start over here another size might be over there so there's it's a lot of different charts you're constantly adding into the cables it is not a very easy way of writing the cables or for you of knitting them because it's very error prone so heavy cables where they're changing increasing or decreasing having it from the bottom up so that you can establish all your cables and you really learn the pattern well it works very very well i find so it's definitely a personal preference but um i just i've i find it easier so i kind of work on the assumption that other knitters would probably find it easier liz don't be tempting you you've enough kits already to last the year they're all gorgeous <laughs> You just have to make a big long list Liz and then you can it's a bit like with the kids at Christmas and you've got a toy catalogue and they have to circle their favorites through the year and then at Christmas they pick their favorites so we'll have to send you out like a physical catalogue and you can search you know circle your favorites and then come and pick when it comes to, to knit the next time but if you don't know it exists you can't have it on your list so just tell me about stuff that's already there draw your attention to it there's a, there is actually a couple of fun things that I, I really want to share with you that we just put up. We got a couple of new bags made. We love making new bags. Every time one bag runs out, rather than repeat the same thing we've started, thanks to, to Laura, um, we end up making a new one. So this time, you probably can't see this as well because it's going to be reversed. You'll find me knitting is what it says. And we've changed the color. You can see we've got like the, the rusty orange, uh, the project bag, and we've got a tote bag version of it. So you can find these just in under the bag section on the website. We have each of the different ones left. So you can actually, you can find those. But I particularly like having the new color incorporated into it because they've always been black up to this point. And it just kind of clicks with us. We don't have to stick with black. We can go for all of the colors. So these are new bags we got in this week. Um, Elsa Louise, you discovered me from the Portulaca Craftsy class. Oh, excellent. It's um, every now and again, the Craftsy class comes up on my feed and it feels like a different person. Anyone who's watched it, I've got very long hair and it's about 10 years ago. So when I look at it, I feel, I feel much, much aged in 10 years. <laughs> But I still do like the class and I still carry the same message. So at least what I'm saying is the same, even if I look different from in the class. A lot more hair. My hair is down to about here in the Craftsy class. It still exists, actually. It's still up there. Um, if, you're on, if anyone is on Craftsy, there's a bunch of different video classes up there that still exist in the universe. 
Um, oh, the other thing we got into the shop to make sure I actually tell you about these things is we've got a couple of more Kupnitz Sakya. There's two greens. There's this one is a slightly lighter color and this is a slightly darker green. Um, and this is kind of a periwinkle color. I have a hard time describing it. I would describe this as periwinkle. Uh, I think it's kind of, a, it's, it's blue with kind of little tiny hints of purpley, but pretty colors. Again, because these are only 50 grams and they're very reasonably priced, it makes it fantastic for if you want to do socks with stripes or alternate colors and things like that, because the two together are going to be 100 grams. You're not getting 200 gram balls. It's just one of each together. So it works very well. But that's our... Um, yeah, there are newest things that have come into the shop today. Um, and I think that's more or less everything I was going to share with you. I would encourage you to go over and have a look at the vlog if you want to learn a little bit more about the Irish Mills and the whole story behind that. So that just went up um, today. Um, Elsa Louise, the spring cardigan information. When is it coming out? That will be out, it will be next month. Um, I'm still knitting through it, so I'm just at the point now where I'm about to start the sleeves. Anyone who's on my Facebook group, you may have noticed that I've been posting just a few little updates on my newer spring cardigan knit along. So it's the top down one and I've finished the body, bound it off last night, starting in on the sleeves now. And it should be, um, I think it's around the middle of April, we will be putting that up for pre-sale. So a few more weeks, you've got time to, um, to knit through stuff any peaks. Um, if you pop into the Facebook group, there is a little bit up there because when Hannah was up here the last day, she was trying it on and we took some photographs of it on her. So um, you can have a little peek on the on the Facebook group. Um, I might actually repost that into Knit Hub as well so that people in Knit Hub can also take a look at it and uh, won't miss out. Um, Liz, the spring cardigan looks lovely. Oh, very good. We'll have to have some kind of a poll or something up for the name of it because it's what I find hardest about putting a pattern up. It's the last thing I do. I'll have everything up and through all of my notes, I'll just be calling it um, spring cardigan knit along, spring cardigan knit along 23. And at some point I have to actually put a name on it. So I am, um, and this one might be something butterfly related because of the fact that um, it's butterfly lace stitch. So so something blue, butterfly, lace, new. If anyone has any ideas, just pop them on up there. Elsa Louise, if you are on um, our Knit Hub, I'll make sure to pop it up there. Otherwise, we can get a, an image up here into stories as well. So I will give you a little hint and you can have a look and see what's what's going on. We won't, we will not leave you out if you're not on Facebook for sure. I know Facebook is not everyone's cup of tea. There's no doubt about that. But yes, so if anyone is uh, looking for us tomorrow, we will be off on a public holiday because it's Patrick's Day. So you just pop stuff up, but it'll be Monday when we come back for most of our general inquiries. I'm usually on and off, but I am hoping to take a little bit of time off as always. Um, and have a great have a great weekend everyone um, and i will see you all next week and next week um i do keep an eye out because we're going to be having a big reveal the campo Knights shawl which is finished we took photo shoots for two of the versions of it last weekend and it turned out really nicely one of them we took some photos downtown because we never go downtown so we went early sunday morning there wasn't too many people around so it's one of the first photo shoots we've done in Cork City, which is really fun. The second one, we went up to the university, so it's got more trees, still closer to what we would usually do. But next week, I will be able to share both versions with you. And um, yeah, and the final pattern will be up and ready for everyone. As well as next week, we will also have the Contemporary Irish Knits patterns will be launched. So I will share those with you. They will be coming out next Wednesday but I will make sure to bring them in and pop them on um, on the on the live next Thursday. So two exciting reveals next Thursday. So you don't want to miss it. I'll be here at the same time, 2.30 next Thursday. Um, I'll see you then. Bye everyone.